Hi everyone. In this chapter 6, we are going to see how to perform a kickstart installation in Red Hat 6. Already we have seen how to install a full option, full uh, it's a graphical based installation in Red Hat 6 in the chapter 2. Uh, while we do the installation, we will get a Anaconda file. We can see that I am using the same machine with the defined mount points, boot, home, op, term, driver log, driver log audit, and the block devices which I defined in the chapter two. So we are going to create a same machine with the same specification and with the same mount points and block devices. For that, I'm going to use the Anaconda installer file this file will be generated while the installation done so back in chapter 2 we see how to install perform a graphical mode installation that time we got this file while the installation completes this file will be created under root directory roots home directory so now we are going to copy this file under our apache and i am going to share it let me overwrite already the file is existing there uh, we need to make some modification in this file to perform a kickstart installation in another new machine let me navigate to the root partition of the web all right i'm going to edit the anaconda file we can see one by one install cd rom language everything we, we used to perform uh, by next next option in the graphical interface but here it's all listed in this anaconda file language and keyboard layout network uh, two network uh, devices are there root password firewall and uh, password time zone AC linux partitions partitions are now it's uh, commanded but we need to remove those hash and what are the packages or want to be installed at last so i'm going to change the network boot option to yes so that once the machine new machine build using this anaconda kickstart file our network will be automatically up so that i am making changes from no to yes then i am going to add some of the partitions i want to command uh uncommand these hashes to create these phone points let me uncommand and once the mount points are uncommand i am going to make the partition zero npr so that what are the changes made in this disk will be if some disk was already the data has exist it will fill the mount partitions with zero okay here we want to clear the partition so clear part all discus want to be initialized okay this is similar to initialize the all uh, we used to choose one of the option initialize all reinitialize all disk this is similar to that one so i'm going to fill the disk with zero master boot records and everything and this is the mount point i already defined in the chapter 2 so i'm going to use the same mount point structure once the installation completes we need to reboot the machine so i am going to mention adding the reboot option there all right so you can see all the changes here let me save the file and exit and i want to change the permission of this file now there is a root permission so if i want to share this kickstart file through apache web server i want to share the change the permission of this file to apache user and group now it change to apache let me try to access this uh, uh, file in web interface for that i want to know the ip of the machine so here i am using the uh, virtual box uh, interconnect network i have so i'm going to use the interconnect uh, ethernet it's 
CTH1 with a 192 series IP. Let me access that uh, Anaconda file in my local version so that it's possible in the remote machine also. VLINKS is a command line web interface, web browser. So we can see at the top HTTP semicolon double slash 192 so I can able to access the uh, Anaconda file using the command line browser. So it's possible to install a operating system in any remote machine using this Anaconda file. So let me see how to perform a kickstart installation now. Let me boot from the serial and choose the kickstart file. Okay, here we go. I'm booting from the CD. Now I want to press escape and I want to point that IP address and the Anaconda file in the remote machine. This is a new machine we are setting up, but the Anaconda file is located in the old machine, which we used to set up in a graphical mode in the chapter 2. Here I want to mention the command. Once I press escape, Linux. KAS is equal to HTTP double slash 192.168.256.101 slash anaconda dot anaconda hyphen ks dot chp. The next kickstart is equal to the part of the machine we are located in the web server. All right, anaconda is loading now. It's all the commands, uh, the, the time zones, the password which I want to use, the boot bootloader password which I want to use, what kind of partition want to be defined, what kind of file system want to be written to the partition, what um, what are the mount points want to be defined, everything now we are getting from the kickstart file. We are not going to manually uh, click one by one and define it. So this will be a graphical mode installation but using a kickstart file. Here we have two NIC cards, so I want to choose any one of the NIC cards. Even if I choose the ETH0 or ETH1, it will get the IP of uh, interconnect network IP. This is for only testing environment. I am using these two NICs, but in actually in the production environment, there will be multiple NICs. But the the PEXE boot or something we can set it to automatically detect the uh, available IP from the DHCP server. So we, we are going to see in the future chapter how to perform a PXC installation. In that I will explain it is that about the PXC installation. So it's Anaconda started. I am not going to do anything now. It will automatically take me through the installation without any user intervention. I don't want to press any enter key or something, something, anything. Every command will be proceed from the kickstart file. You can see that device examining is going on. Let me make the screen more sortable. Here we can see that it's uh, started to even define the partitions and it's formatting the disk, creating the file system. So it's almost complete with the package or uh, not package. Uh, it's done with the keyboard, a system language, time zone, uh, root password. And everything it's almost done and now it's creating the file system all right so using a kickstart file we are attempting a unuser intermediate we want to perform the manual steps how to perform a installation by clicking next 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 it's very easier for a deployment purpose. Actually, we can see many types of deployment like this on 
uh, we can see how to perform a kickstart installation from satellite server. We can see how to perform an installation from uh, similar to satellite server. Satellites is uh, Red Hat paid software, uh, but we can use similar spacewalk. It's one of the open source from Fedora, Fedora the Red Hat or uh, Red Hat's open source tool is Spacewalk. Depends on Spacewalk only they um, develop the satellite, but satellite is a paid one. Uh, we want to get the subscription from the Red Hat. According to the 50 machines, 100 machines, 500 machines, there, there will be subscription. And it's very costly as one. But similar to that, we if we want to use our open source, we can use the spacewalk. But there will be some restrictions. That is enough for some of the thousand machine environment or uh, ten thousand machine environment. The spacewalk will support up till um, twenty thousand machines. We can connect the we can patch management or uh, life cycle management. It's one of the life cycle management. Uh, we can provide the packages, yum, repo, everything will be provided from that server. All right, the package started to copy. Let me wait for some time. So I'm not doing anything now. Mm, now we can see here uh, about the spacewalk later because uh, spacewalk is one of the patch management management tool same like satellite satellite is paid on from the radar but i am using here in a large scale environment it's a enterprise environment i am working and uh, we are using space for for uh, oracle linux uh, again fedora like that and we are using uh, space for Actually, I have we have a satellite server too, but we are uh, it's a paid on one lead we are using for the Red Hat machines. This installation is taking too much time. Let me fast forward a little bit because it's a virtual machine, it's taking too much time. If I perform the same thing in physical machine, it will be very, very less time. All right, it's almost done. Once uh, the package is completed, the bootloader will start to install. You can see the performing the portion solution script. Okay, installing bootloader. I have mentioned in the kickstart file that it want to reboot the machine once the packages and everything done. Uh, so it's rebooting the machine. All right, we got the web menu. It's booting into the operating system. Here, we want to get similar, the same layout of the partitions and the mount points. What are the block devices I have defined in the chapter two? The same chapter two I'm using, but it's using the kickstart file. I have performed this installation. In chapter 2, I performed a full installation by graphical interface. But here, it's using kickstart file, which generated while we installed the operating system in full graphical mode installation. Here, we can see that uh, setting host name, it's uh, localhost.local domain. We can even uh, use the host name in the kickstart file, but I here forgot to mention that one. I changed the boot uh, is equal to yes in the, for the network. So only the C we can see that uh, determine IP information for ETH0 done. The interface was up. ETH0 and ETH1 was up now. If I not uh, change that no to yes, we need to manually edit the etc sysconfig network 
Python script ifcft etk0 and eth1 and I want to make the parameter uh, on board yes no is equal to from no to yes I want to change it so then again I want to restart the network so it will be little bit small two commands we want to run instead of that if we mention in the kickstart file while the machine coming up it will be up in network all right we got the boot screen and now we are reached the login screen let me login to the root account the same password which i have used for the chapter 2 it's uh, that so we can see that uh, df minus h same layout of my mount point and let me try to list my block devices the same block devices which we have used in the chapter 2 okay here we seen how to install perform the external signal let me see in next chapter we are going to see thousands of geeks so please subscribe with us thank you